the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. gentlemen from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. Oscar De Loya's Golden Boy Promotions in association with Hatton Promotions and Debella Entertainment are proud to present the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the IBO and Ring Magazine Light Welterweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Affliction and Tecate Cerveza Con Character. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman Bill Brady, Executive Director Keith Kaiser, IBO President Ed Levine. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout, should it go the distance, are Dwayne Ford, Jerry Roth, and Glenn Trowbridge. And inside the ring, the man in charge of the action at the bell, referee Kenny Bayless. And now, for the thousands in attendance, and courtesy of HBO Sports, the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue with white, officially weighing 139 pounds. His professional record stands at 26 fights, 25 victories, including five knockouts, with only one defeat and a world title. From Brooklyn, New York, the former junior welterweight champion of the world, Holly Magic Man. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with silver and blue. Official weight, 140 pounds. Professional record, 45 fights. 44 victories, including 31 knockouts. Only one defeat with three world titles. The former junior welterweight and welterweight world champion, the fighting pride of Manchester, England, the reigning, defending, IBO Ring Magazine Light Welterweight Champion of the World, Ricky Hitman Dutta. Okay, trunks are a little high here. Punches? land in this area will be considered a clean punch. Now, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to caution you to keep the fight clean, protect yourself at all times, and what I say you must obey. Good luck. Touch up. If Ricky Hatton boxes as well as brawls, does that mean there are two Ricky Hattons? And can Paulie Malinaji deal with both of them? Tell you what, um, Malinaji looks in good shape right now. As Larry pointed out, producing the dreadful faux pas of the hair extensions, getting his hair cut in the ring, and also getting trimmed several rounds by Indu. And afterward, he said, that wasn't me at my best. Both are hoping to elevate their games significantly tonight, six months later. What Hatton is trying to do is box his way inside instead of just lunging inside as he has often done. And what he's, what he's doing, uh, obviously he's been working on the jab, but uh, he feels that he needs to get a lot closer before he throws his jab, and not necessarily the case in all, in all cases. You can actually start your jab from way out, and as you get closer, be more accurate with it. But already you can see the dynamic. Hatton is going to come in. Malinaji wants to catch him on the way in. The question is, what does he catch him with? Malinaji has no power, as is evidenced by his record with only five knockouts.
counts among his 25 wins. A and lot three. of that is because of his often damaged oh, right oh, hand. Oh, no, him up, and, him up. and three of those five knockouts, Jim, were in his first three fights. Exactly. His hand, is, his right hand, has been operated four separate times in his career, and including immediately after the Love More and Do fight in May. He says he knows it's fine. But if he breaks his right hand in the fight, that is to be expected. And it's something he has fought with several times before. But there's the jab, which is his primary weapon. And if he can get it going and land the right hand behind it, he is regarded as an extremely live underdog against Ricky Hatton. Already you can see why. Two to one, no, 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 no. underdog. Malinaji throws a, a terrific left jab. I love the way it comes out. Nice and sharp, nice and crisp, very accurate. Throws it very well. You know, that and his right hand in combination is a, are a thing of beauty. Stop, 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 man. Watch the heads, fellas. Watch the heads. Hatton simply can't afford to allow Malinaji to develop a rhythm with his jab in his right hand. And no. in the latter part of the first round, Foley is getting it. A good round for Malinaji. You got a knot up on your head now. Move your head now and use your face. Okay? I told you everything is timing. Keep your hand up here, man. Pick his jab. Pick his jab. Pick his right hand. Hook over the top. He ain't got no right hand. I'm just trying to come over top of the jab with the right hand. Okay? Very good, champ. Very good, baby. Beautiful. The feints are working good. <laughs> the feints are working good. Keep the feints going and give me double jabs. But keep that head moving. That head movement's throwing them off. Okay? He's the same old Ricky Hatton. Ain't nothing changed, baby. All right? Very good, baby. All right. Keep it tight inside. Gabby Box numbers in round one. Malinaji 11 out of 43, Hatton 7 out of 43. Not much to choose between the two of them. Down the stretch of the round, it appeared to be Malinaji who was the more comfortable fighter with the way things were going in the ring. You see, Rick, Ricky, I hope, doesn't fall into the same track as what he usually falls into, and that's coming in straight on where your opponent knows where you're going to be and leaving yourself wide open. So he needs to come in with his hands up, looking to pick that jab and not get hit. because you're moving in on under his power. American fans uh, sensing the possibility of an upset already have started to chant USA, USA in response to the Brits. Well, they'll never make as much noise as Hatton's British fans who have had years to practice their routines. And there's a big left by Ricky Hatton. said that he he thought that he could extend his career by modifying his style the way Arturo Gatti and Marco Antonio Barrera did at roughly this stage in their careers. But I don't think that uh, he's going to be able to make that change where he could just box against the boxer. Well, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say he can change his style completely, but he can improve on his style. Certain things, oh, good, good right, right hand. hand. Good right hand. And that hurt him, too. There's a bloody mouth. Malinaji's holding the on. left eye of Malinaji, and Malinaji was badly hurt yep. by the hat and right hand. And he had a hope. And he catches his hat with an uppercut coming in. But suddenly they're rolling, and that's Ricky Hatton's fight. 
with 20 seconds left in the round. Blood under the left eye of Pauli Malinazzi. Stop, stop, hey, Definitely wobbled him with a minute to go. Hey, you pulled it from the outside and he's coming over the top. You got to give me the double jab, Paul. You're not double jabbing. You just throw one jab at a time. Okay? Now stop throwing that uppercut from the outside. That's how he's catching with that right hand. Okay? Now listen, you got to go to the double jab, Paul. And you're pulling up with the hook. You got to stay down. Just like you did in the first round. Don't get caught up. Okay, you're getting caught up now. Keep your hands tight to your body. And, and here we go and see Patton catching him with that right hand, which really hurt Malinaji for a moment. There, and there's another look at it. Malinaji had the presence to hold on and to keep his knee off the canvas. Box numbers in round two. Oh, Hayden no, no, nine no, out of 51. No, 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 no. Malinowski eight out of 41. But you saw the big right hand by Hatton, which surely was enough to at least win him the round. Now you heard Buddy McGirt asking Pauli Malinowski for the double jab. You have to take a risk to throw the jab twice against a jump in right hand puncher like Hatton. It seems that Hatton now has sensed that he has to try Hold him up, work out. to overpower the boxer. Work out, work out! is beginning to show up. He was way more sluggish in round one than is now the case. You see the verb of the vibrancy, which has always marked the way he fought Lennox. Nobody fights three minutes of every round more consistently than Ricky Hatton. There's a cut along the nose of Malinaz. He does not look dangerous. Look out, look out. Watch your hands, watch your hands. We can tell that Ricky Hatton loves to mix it up. He loves to box. Look out. Now, really, Ricky just wants to get some room, some punching room, so he can land some good punches in there. I don't get the sense that Kenny Bayless is breaking them up as frequently or as immediately as Joe Cortez did in the fight between Hatton and Floyd Mayweather. Stop, stop. Hatton is getting a little more chance here, it seems to me, to wrestle with Malinaji and set up shots inside, which is what he says he wanted to do and didn't get a work chance out, to do out, against Freddie Boy Floyd. And the funny thing is, not, you know, they said that Ricky Hatton is going to hold a lot in this fight, but I don't see him holding. I see it actually the other way around right now. Saw Malinaji reach out and grab him with the left there. Some good body work by Hatton, which could pay off later in the fight. See, that's the problem. If you try to hold him, he gets underneath and works, and then chops over the top of the right, as he did there. Malinaji needs to keep this fight at distance. He needs to work that jab and work that combination punching and keep R Ricky Hatton at bay. He catches Malinaji with a left hook. Brings the British fans up and out of their seats. Straight right hand again brings the British fans up and out of their seats. And you can see Hatton saying to Kenny Bayless, he's holding me. Boxing After Dark returns next Saturday night with a 154-pound matchup between Paul Williams and Bruno Phillips. Also that night, fast-rising heavyweight Chris Ariola takes on Travis Walker. That's Ariola right there. Then December 16, it's the premiere of HBO Sports' latest documentary film, Breaking the Huddle, the integration of college football. Rick, keep it simple. Okay, you're making the harder than it has to be. 
Okay? He's coming in. You're standing straight up. He's hitting you with double jab. Give me double jab. Jab at his chest. Okay? Jab at the chest, baby. Let's go. Relax. Relax, Paulie. Copy box numbers through round three. Hatton landing slightly more. 31 out of 146. 28 out of 122. Maybe more tellingly, 27 of Hatton's 31 connects are power shots, and a couple of them have been eye-catching, head-popping power shots. Time in. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three? Okay, Jim, two rounds to one. 29, 28, Ricky Hatton. Jim, I'll tell you something. Paulie Malinaji is standing right in front of Ricky Hatton. He's trying to catch him on the way in with double jams. But Ricky Hatton is getting inside, scoring the better shots because he's stronger. The only way that Malinaji can win this fight is to start to circle and box. He's got to move. If he stands straight in front of Hatton, like he's doing now, Ricky's going to murder him on the inside. Two to one, Hatton. Circle and box is what Malinaji did down the stretch of round one when he won it. And he has come out trying to circle and box in round four. And I, I agree with Harold. You know, he definitely has to circle and box. But what he's doing, he's putting his head down. He, he needs to keep his head up and stay tall in this and use his, his reach as an advantage and not bringing himself down to Ricky Hatton's level. He's really not that kind of a boxer, Lennox. He's a boxer, but he wants to stand in front of this guy and beat him to the punch. As often as not, in the last two rounds, Hatton has been beating Malinazzi to the punch. That's what's going to make the difference over the long haul if it keeps up. Well, as the fight goes on and the fighters learn about each other, um, Hatton is learning that, that he can't be hurt by Malinazzi. Why not take chances? Stop, stop. All right, here we go, here we go. This was Malinaji's problem against Miguel Cotto. An inability to hurt the stronger Puerto Rican fighter. Work out, work out. Malinaji was able to win some rounds against Cotto, but ultimately was ground down by the physical strength disparity and the punching power difference. That's what his fans have to fear here. Look out, look out, Paulie. Good uppercut by Malinaji as he got out of the clinch with Hatton. See what happens with some guys that keep their left hand down. They keep it down so long until the guy comes in and then they just grab with it. What he needs to do is keep it down until he gets close to him and raises it up, up to his head to protect him. And then when he gets close, push him off or either punch him with a jab. It's really fascinating that after all of the talk, Malinaji's people put up about wanting to get the right referee and avoid Hatton's holding. It is Malinaji who is holding Hatton over and over and over in the early rounds. Not only that, but Malinaji said that he thought that in America, because of his holding, that Hatton would just be a club fighter. Well, what does that make Paulie, who has doubled Hatton's holding? There's the Hatton Band. Got their start in Hamburg, then eventually moved to Manchester. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you mean those aren't the Beatles? No, they're not. <laughs> Look, I was, it's not even Sgt. Right Pepper's here. Lonely Hearts Club Band. I want you to man, I want, I want you to pick a lot of jazz, man, and throw your own jazz. You're going to touch it. Watch it. Believe me, you're going to touch it. Catch it and stick, touch it. And here's uh, Ricky Hatton beating Malinaji to the punch. Malinaji somehow not seeing that straight jab to his head. Malinaji has had four operations on his right hand, including after his last fight. Nothing with his left. His and right is as brittle as uncooked spaghetti, but his left seems to work fine. And a part of the result of it is that sometimes when he throws his right hand, he does not remember to punch it. As Lennox will tell you, you throw a right hand or you throw any punch without punching it, you're not going to make any dent. No, I mean, 
a, a boxer like Ricky Hatton, you gotta you gotta throw both punches, both hands to keep him off of you because he's just like a train wreck coming at you. And if you don't have anything to stop him, he'll keep on coming. Well, this was regarded as the big problem if Malinaji broke his right hand. But it turns out perhaps to be a problem, breakage or no breakage. Now Malinaji catches Hatton coming in and pops him with a left jab. See, it looks like to me that, you know, this is a one-handed fight for Malinaji, and, and he does that quite well. He's done that quite well in his past fights, but, there's, you know, some guys you really need to tag on the chin and, and really make them respect your power. Malinaji may have managed to surprise in Guju and to some degree in Du with his strength in clinches and his ability to move the opponent around the ring. When he clinches with Ricky Hatton, it just doesn't look like his style, and it doesn't look good for him. It doesn't because, you know, we're, we're expecting Malinaji to be moving around, showing his boxing ability, and it's, it's difficult if you don't have power. You know, because the guy's going to come, has nothing to be fearful of, and keep coming and putting pressure on you. In a situation right there, Malinaji should be first, but Ricky Hatton's first. Boxers always have to be first, especially if you have a good jab. You gotta get that jab working. Well, Paulie Malinaji had a good first round, but increasingly it becomes clear. If he's gonna win rounds, he'll have to do so with his feet. And all too often, he's finding himself locked up inside with Ricky Hatton in a no-win battle. Well, they're too crowd-pleasing personalities but their styles are not exactly crowd pleasing you fight you fighting in his rhythm you understand stay on the outside and just use your jab Paulie okay there's no need to be inside there's no need Okay, if you're inside, you work. If you're not going to work, you stay on the outside. Nice try. Don't give him a chance to breathe. If you, if you need his left, if you need his side. If you need... Go ahead. Go ahead. If you, if you, if you, need, his, if you need his slide back, pop! Get the, get the, the punching room. That's what you need. Snap your hand out and get the punching room. Shorten your punches up on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be throwing them too wild. Yeah, yeah. Bring your hands up, bring your hands up, faint, faint jab, move your head in the way. Okay, seconds out, guys. Let's go, champ. All right. Just to underline what Larry Merchant said about the styles not exactly conspiring to please fans. Average punches through the fifth round. Hatton, 9 out of 50. Malinowski, 8 out of 36. In other words, neither guy has been able to no, average no, double no, figures no, in landed punches no. through the fight. That is scratch and sniff all the way. Stay outside. Don't get into clinches with Ricky Hatton. Is this better for Malinaji Lennox? Well, it's a lot better for Malinaji because he's not getting hit and he's using his boxing ability. This is what we expect from him. And, you know, as far as his jab is concerned, he needs to throw it overtime, even double jabs. Right now, he's, he's content to throw one jab at a time. A guy like Ricky Hatton, Malinaji should be throwing triple jabs. Jab, 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 left hook. Because if he's a left-handed puncher, he's supposed to work double the time, triple the time with that left hand. There he goes. He's waiting. He's waiting for Ricky Hatton to come in when he should really start it. He should be first. Like that. That 
that's the way from Alan Azzi to actually win rounds. He patting off of him with the jab and step away. He should be first throwing the punches and last throwing the punches. This round has gone better for Paulie. There haven't been nearly as many clinches in the round. Not as many situations where he's reached out and grabbed Hatton and pulled him to him. He gets hit with a left hand there. And Hatton is showing a little bit here of, of slick. He's, he's not lunging in. He's a little bit under control when he, when he comes forward. Moving his head, as you just saw there. Um, doing better. Yeah, I mean, what he's doing is he's allowing Polly to, to miss, and he slips to one side and comes back, whether with a right hand or a left hook. Also, what he's doing is waiting for Polly to throw that jab so he can block it and come back with his own jab. And, and he is he's controlling the territory. This isn't a territorial game like football, no, 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 but no, no, no. you get a sense that he's controlling what part of this ring they're in. Yeah, he, and he's he's in charge. And he's comfortable. He's, he's, he looks comfortable, and he seems like he feels good about the situation in the ring. But in terms of landed punches, Malinaji has his best round of the fight. No, no, let him up, let him up. And the color of the fight changes slightly in the sixth. Coming up tomorrow night, another installment of Belo Oya Pacquiao 24-7. I can train as hard as I want, but I can't do it myself. I, I need a team. I love to fight toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I love to throw a lot of punches. This is the biggest moment in my boxing career. Best known fighter in the sport against the number one pound for pound, Oscar De La Hoya versus Manny Pacquiao, Saturday, December 6th, live on HBO Pay-Per-View. Okay? All right, don't worry about the crowd. Get in your rhythm like you're doing now, okay? All right, there we go now. Now I want the straight right hand, not that uppercut. If you're here, shoot it. Outside, no good. All right? Let's get to the double jab, okay? Give me more face. Paulie Malinaji given credit by CompuBox for landing 15 punches in the sixth round. Every single one of them was a jab. Harold, how do you have it through six? Hey, okay, Jim, five rounds to one, 59, 55, Ricky Hatton. Jim, Ricky Hatton couldn't ask for more than a guy who can't punch and is going to stand right in front of him and wrestle with him and let Hatton score the hardest shots inside. And that's what we got here. Paulie can only fight if he moves, if he throws the seven, eight punch combinations that made him what he is. Uh, you know, Paulie was always a guy who threw a lot of shots. When he gets inside now, all he's doing is one jab, one jab, one jab. Where are the six punch combinations? Five to one, hat. Is he missing the six punch combinations because he's reticent to release his hands that way, Lennox? Well, you know, he's, he's going up against a guy that's giving him a lot of pressure. And uh, what he needs to do is, like Harold says, throw those combinations. And like I say, you know, as far as throwing his jab, he needs to throw triple, double jabs, double hooks, everything with his left hand, but they have to be double and triple. Well, we're seeing four and five punch combinations, but they're coming from Ricky Hatton. And Hatton has rocked Malinaji with a couple of big lefts in this round. And there's another one. See, Malinaji, when he gets hit, he's looking to put his head down. He should be looking to keep his head up and, and, and score back. Frankly, Malinaji is fighting so defensively at times, it looks as though he's given up on winning the fight and is simply trying to get through it. He doesn't have the kind of body language that suggests that he really knows what he needs to do to win the fight. Well, you know, he knows that Ricky Hatton is always coming, so he's trying to set him up and making him walk onto a left hand. Big left by Hatton walking in. Just busted Malinaji right across the chop. And that punctuates a round in which Ricky Hatton landed several solid shots. Okay, listen to me. You're not giving me enough right hand. Every time you throw the right hand, you're hitting him. Okay? Give me the right hands off the jab, baby. Uh, he's just going his yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah, your jab worked good when you use it, man. You don't use it enough. Yeah, yeah. All right, then. 
Let me see it. Let me see it. Let me see it. Let me see it, Ray. And here, here we see uh, Hatton wobbling Malinaji with a straight left. This is a punch that is seen to be getting through by Hatton frequently. Very active round, round seven for Ricky Hatton. 18 out of 45 landed according to Coffee Box. That's the high number of connected punches in the fight for Hatton. 12 of the 18 were power shots. Malinaji landing 12 out of 37. It's a couple of counter right hands, mostly left jabs. You heard Buddy McGirt asking Paulie Malinaji to throw more rights. Floyd Mayweather in Hatton's corner said, your jab works when you use it, use it more. Good That's a right hand by Malinaji. And that's exactly why McGirt was asking for it. Because at this point, Hatton doesn't expect Malinaji to throw right hands. No, and uh, you know, these are the type of punches he needs to throw to keep Hatton off. You know, whether his hands can withstand him throwing more of those, but this is what he needs to do. And he's only going to keep Hatton off momentarily because Ricky's made clear that he doesn't think Paulie can hurt him and is willing to simply walk through his stuff. Well, he, what he's walking through is jabs, and most boxers, if you tell them, if you give them the choice between walking through a jab and a right hand, they'll rather walk through a jab. And Ricky knows that there's no right hand coming after that jab, so it makes his job a lot easier. Another big left hand by Hatton. Moves Malinaji three feet back. There's the right hand landing again for Pauli Malinaji as he pops Hatton while moving away. Again, Malinaji reaches out to grab Hatton. Kenny Bayless warns Malinaji. You know, Malinaji, you know, although he gets in there, he doesn't do any inside fighting. That's the point. And Once they're in a clinch, he doesn't try to throw punches. No, I mean, that left hand, that he needs to be working overtime. He needs to be either working the right hand inside or something, but he's electing, looking to, to reach out and hold. A left and an uppercut from Hatton shook Malinaji momentarily. Again. And as you suggested earlier, Jim, Malinaji's body language is not that of a winner. Nope. This is where I would be telling Ricky Hatton to, you know, after he throws that jab, throw up a cut because Malinaji will duck and that's where he's going. He's looking to hold and grab. That uppercut. Now, you know, I, want, I want you to do this right here. You see, you have to put your oh, throw, you quick throw button. So you straight, throw your straight right hand, straight right hand, left hook, right down the middle. Wow, wow. See? Throw right down the middle. Listen, on the inside, he's pulling your head down, hitting you with the uppercut. Stay from the inside. There's, there's no need for you to be inside. Okay? You feeling okay? Okay, support him. Let's go, baby. Let's start getting to the double jab in the straight right hand. Okay? Now, if the right hands don't land, don't worry about the... the, the, the. And here we look at uh, Malinaji's best punch, which is a right hand. One of the only few right hands he's thrown in this fight. And here's Hatton throwing a straight right, and this is where... The uppercut comes in because Malinaji puts down his head after he throws his punches. Malinaji's face is marked. And there's room there for Hatton to maybe create some bleeding out, if he can get to some of those stop, marks. Stop, stop. Out this, Hatton's fellas. left eye has been swelling since early in the fight. And he rips Malinaji with a left hook and Malinaji sticks out his tongue and 
clowns for him a little bit, but everyone stop, could see stop, the impact stop, of the puck. Let go. Let go. I don't think that that was a tongue What's lashing that, that? for Hatton. Time, time. Don't know what's going on with these uh, gloves. Taped gloves. And they've taped it a couple times in the corner. They need to get better tape than that. That is the wrong tape to be using. He got a chance to tie his shoes after being wobbled by a big Juan Lascano combination in the 10th round in Manchester back in May. That was an eye opener for some observers at a moment when Hatton seemed to need at least kind consideration and got it. All right, that's good, that's good. All right. After that fight, Hatton fired trainer Billy Graham, who had been with him since boyhood, and hired Floyd Mayweather Sr., in effect preventing Mayweather from being able to work with Oscar De La Hoya for De La Hoya's upcoming fight with Manny Pacquiao. Hatton seems to feel as though he can do business in this round. Well, they've had a long enough rest. And I'm sure, I'm sure Hatton feels that he's winning this fight. Bruises under both of the eyes of Malinaji. Work out, fellas. Come on, here we go. And it looks as though his spirit has been bruised as well. Oh, no. Work out. Stop, stop. like this where you see Malinaji has such great boxing ability and he's just relying on his jab. I, it makes me feel that something's wrong with his right hand. He's not throwing as much as he should be. Really work depending out, on his Come left on, hand. And, you know, I just feel that he's just one-handed in there. And he's at a disadvantage. I have a wild hunch it doesn't matter. I, I mean, even if his right hand were absolutely perfect, he's never had power in it anyway. And it, it seems to me as though if he's reluctant to throw his right hand, it's partially because of Ricky Hatton's counter left hooks and the, the accuracy and the quickness with which Hatton has been ripping him. Looking at Malinaji in this fight, I think you have to credit his managers and his promoters with a good job getting him to the top rung of the 140-pound weight class. For a guy with no power whatsoever to have gotten into this fight against Ricky Hatton, that's pretty good business stop, work. Stop. I agree. Very good management. Um, he's a good little fighter, but when you get to the top, top of the list, you're going to fight somebody who's stronger than him. It's inevitable. You're forcing the clinches. When he's getting close to you, you're reaching out. No need for that, Paulie. If you're going to, if you're going to go in, go in with a double jab. Don't go in and force the clamp. As soon as your hands go on the outside, he's coming up the middle. You lose. Huh? Yeah, you let yeah, that man. When you do that, push him off you. Push him off, break with the left hook right hand. Like I told you, man. Hey. And here you see Ricky hitting Malinaji with a good punch. Malinaji accepting it. Realizing he got hit with a good punch, showing, sticking out his tongue, saying, yeah, you got me, but I'm still here. Pauli Malinaji landed one out of seven attempted power punches in the ninth round. Again, in CompuBox counting, a power punch is anything other than a jab. Malinaji has landed an average of fewer than three power punches per round in the fight. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Hey, Jim, 89, 82, eight rounds to one, Ricky Hatton. Jim, I got to tell you something. This is not the Paulie Malinaji I know. And I've seen most of his fights because I'm a New Yorker. Jim, he's not moving. The five-six punch combination right there. He's standing right in front of this guy, letting him get inside. And Ricky had this much stronger, landing the stronger, cleaner shots and winning the fight on clean, effective punching. 
It's not Malinaji. It's a different guy altogether. No, it is not. It is Malinaji, Harold. It's cause and effect. Now, Hatton now. isn't let him being the Malinaji that you saw against lesser fighters. Stop. He's jumping across the ring. He's very quick getting into Malinaji. You can't escape him except by getting on a bicycle, and that's not his style. Hold it, hold it, let him up, let him up. As Hatton said coming into the fight, I respect Malinaji, but his big wins are over Lovemore and Doe and Herman in Goja. I have fought better opposition than that. I think at the end of the day, you have to credit Hatton with being correct on that score. But his wins over Luis Colazo and Jose Luis Castillo and uh, 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 Juan Arango and other fighters well, like that. Costa Zoo. Costa Zoo. Yeah. Maybe the best 140 pounder we've seen. Oh, 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 watch the gloves. Stop, stop, stop. Hatton watch beat Zoo at the end of his career before a huge and tumultuous crowd in Manchester. That's really the fight that made him an international star. Made him quit. Yeah, I mean, you know, there you have it again. Melanji electing to hold and not really box inside. This is part of the fight. It's a Sense in this fight's going 100% his way. He has to be careful. I, I don't think he has to be careful of any power shots by Malinaji, but you know, he wants to end this fight with two good rounds and uh, a good performance. Stop, stop, stop. Well, Hatton's a competitor. He'd love to walk away with a knockout. It's not going to be that easy, given that Malinaji appears to be more interested in finishing the rounds, holding when necessary, and hasn't found an answer to try to give himself a chance to win. Relax, Rick, relax, just relax. I don't know what Mayweather has done for Hatton, but he hasn't heard him. Well, you know, I did see some good things in there. Uh, you know, like I said, he's slipping to a side and trying yeah, to parry some punches. You need you to keep pressure on him. Keep your hand up, good. Or move your head. Every time your hand up. Huh? You understand me? I'm good, I'm good. I know, but you're not, you're not punching. I'm not going to see you take this shot. OK? Sounds to me as though Buddy McGirt is telling Paulie Malinaji that he might stop the fight unless Malinaji can do better in these last couple of rounds. Now that has to be an ego deflator for Malinaji. Maybe Buddy is simply trying to wake the fighter up and say, you're in a desperate situation. I'm going to threaten your ego by telling you that I might stop this fight. You had better throw some punches. What, what could be more desperate than a fighter who appears to be way behind and he can't knock his opponent out. It's it's like uh, being out in the middle of the ocean with nothing in sight but water. And having been hammered by two left hands inside, he grabbed Hatton's leg before Bayless pulled him apart. You know, I think, I, I think his trainer's thinking about throwing in the towel They're gonna right now. They're going to throw it in right now. You are exactly right. Absolutely right, Lennox Lewis, Buddy McGirt came up the steps and he pushes Malinaji away as Malinaji complains to him. No, I think he did the right thing because there was no way he's going to win the fight. And, and what is he going to do? Just accept punch, punishment all the time? Well, he's not, and he's he, not was getting a beating, he was getting a beating in the body and Malinaji is, is very hurt and humiliated. He wanted to go the distance at least. And you can feel his pain in a way, both physically and emotionally. Now, in case you missed this, here's what's going on in the ring. And as Kenny Bayless pulls them apart, 
Buddy McGirt comes up the steps. See him behind Malinaji over there in the corner? And he has a Nevada State Athletic official with him waving the towel. This makes clear to Kenny Bayless that they want the fight stopped. Hatton throws his arms up. Now watch what happens between McGirt and Malinaji. As Malinaji says, how could you do that? He pushes McGirt away and vice versa. You know, most boxers want to finish the round. You got one round left. Obviously, you want to go out on your feet. You don't want to fight to be stopped like that. But, you know, a trainer has his duty. And, you know, there was no way that Malinaji was going to win this fight anyway. He just didn't want to get any unnecessary shots or be humiliated anymore. He was out of it from round three on. Ricky Hatton rolling to a TKO victory. Michael Buffer has the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand, referee Kenny Bayless calls a halt to the contest. The official time, 28 seconds, round number 11. The winner by TKO victory, still the IBO Ring Magazine Light Welterweight Champion of the World, the fighting pride of Manchester, England, Ricky.